might be my arrogance, but ain't nobody stopping me. That's how I go when you pay for the shows. What's going on, Mark Pups and wrestling fans alike? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while. How you guys doing? Especially been a while for wrestling content, but the reality is I've been starting to do more wrestling stuff, and I want to get back into the build, especially for WrestleMania, because it is the most exciting time of the year in wrestling. So let's jump right into a, a, a easy topic, shall we? Because I know, as a cis white male, everybody needs to hear my thoughts on a controversial subject in the wrestling world. And we did kind of get one of those last night, at least for some. You see, Nyla Rose, this lady right here, became the first ever transgender female to win a woman's title in a professional wrestling organization at least a major one uh that's right nala rose last night did beat rio to win the aw women's championship and it's going to upset some people and it already has we've seen the internet kind of backlash and then of course the protectors come out and everybody has their thoughts and opinions and go crazy with the entire thing and that's just what the internet does so let's go round and round just a little bit more and indulge me for a few moments if you would be so kind so first and foremost, I want to put my thoughts out on the real world for just a moment. In real sporting events and actual athletic prowess, I do have some misgivings. I have to admit to that. I'm not 100% comfortable with transgender females, males, born males, becoming females and then competing against natural born, biologically born females. I do have a little bit of issues, especially when it's at the uh, the, the more adolescent ranks uh, i just there's a lot of competitive balance things there's a lot of competitive things that some people are just going to dismiss and honestly some of you are going to dislike this video and hate fuck the comment sections right now just because of that stance but i don't care that's just how i feel about it and that is what it is now what's beautiful about wrestling is none of that matters because we know that wrestling isn't real we know that wrestling is booked it's scripted it's acting to a degree. It's showcasing. It's it's spectacle. You know, that's what wrestling is. And that's why you can kind of take off your real world lenses for a moment and look at this situation through the perspective of entertainment, of completely scripted and, and uh, your the disillusionment of wrestling that ability to suspend your disbelief that's the lens that i think you have to look through this on if you want to look at it from a fair standpoint not necessarily an ethical or moral or any of those other fucking things because you don't need to you don't need to so nyla rose became the first ever woman's champion in AEW last night and she did so beating a very small woman, which I think for some people is part of the problem. And uh, Rio, who's a great champion, by the way. But it looked awkward because of the size differential. Now, I'm going to dismiss that whole argument right now for most of you. Why? Because we have big men beating little men all the time in wrestling. And nobody gives a shit. Jesus Christ, it's celebrated most of the time. Look at Kevin Nash uh, lawn darting Rey Mysterio into the side of the trailer back in the 90s. It's celebrated. People loved it. People went crazy for it. We have this all the time. It's not a big deal. And subsequently, we have smaller guys beating bigger guys. And Rey Mysterio is another great example of that. And now we live in this time and place where we have intergender wrestling a hell of a lot more commonplace. Now, some people, I'm not a big fan of intergender wrestling just in general, just like I'm not a fan of intergender fighting. I'm just not. I don't want to see... Uh, a male beat up a woman or a woman beat up a male. I just don't. I, I, it doesn't do anything for me from an entertainment standpoint. But again, in wrestling, you can kind of put on a different perspective lens and it makes things a little bit more interesting and entertaining. And I think that's pretty much the argument. That's pretty much the basis of it. If you can kind of accept it from that perspective this is a, a pretty amazing thing that happened uh, especially when you look at the person which not a lot of people are going to do nyla rose has a fantastic backstory a real life backstory that i think most of you should kind of look out grew up kind of rough kind of rough to say the fucking least and it's a story of perseverance and i love those type of stories you know uh, getting a, a little bit of a late bloomer she is like 37 now getting up there in age. So, so to have these type of moments, to be able to do something that's groundbreaking is fantastic. Now, 
why it's an issue in the wrestling world is kind of WWE's fault in a way. Because we've had some interesting things happen over the last few years with the women's revolution and evolution. And you have all these women in WWE and all around the world, by the way, that have really fought for women's wrestling. And, you know, that, that spotlight to be rightfully on them. And in the Royal Rumble, and this is just bad timing on WWE's part, maybe fortuitous and even, you know, properly planned timing on AEW's part, because in the Royal Rumble, in the Women's Royal Rumble this year, they had a little bit of a hiccup when they brought in Santino Morella, who is just a, a, a guy. You know, he's not transgender, he's, he's not gay, none of these things. And he comes in, not that those necessarily correlate, but you know what I mean, there's nothing unstandardized about Santino Morella. And he comes in to the ring dressed in his alter ego, Santina Morella. And in the Women's Royal Rumble, it kind of caused a little bit of a stir. And the women in the match really sold their anger, whether it was genuine or not. There's been a lot of things over the years with WWE where they kind of stepped on the women's revolution. The James Ellsworth stuff comes to mind where it's like you do all these things to lift up the women's section of it only to have a man come in and kind of steal the spotlight and make it about him. And I think that becomes part of the problem, and that is on WWE for still parading some of these things out there like they're an anomaly, like they're weird, just like they're doing with Lana and, and, and Bobby Lashley. The fact that it, they're interracial is supposed to be shocking. It kind of shows uh, a little bit behind the times. But for some people, it's not all that behind the times. It, these are things that still shock and amaze people. And you can't fight that. That's just how people are going to feel. And I, I think as long as you don't use those as platforms of hate, I think it's perfectly fine to have some of those opinions or at least still be kind of shocked and amazed by those type of things. And that, I understand, will probably be an unpopular opinion, but I'm not looking to fucking spread hate mobs over anybody over a goddamn opinion. It's just not in my nature. It's just who I am. So... I think from a booking standpoint, what AEW did, especially from a PR standpoint, is pretty fucking brilliant. You have uh, Nyla Rose, who comes from the background that she does, who is, uh, who is transgender. You have some people who are going to call this a shield move, because you kind of can't really shit on AEW for this decision. If you do, you know you're going to get the people coming at you, the SJWs, the snowflakes, whatever we want to call them, coming at you full force, going crazy. You got a problem with that transphobe and things of that nature, and it's going to get shut down pretty fucking quick. And it's unfortunate because I don't think that needs to happen in this case. This isn't a situation that I think warrants that because, again, it's a perspective lens. Not everything has to be political. Not everything has to be politicized. I think this is one of those situations because of the safety that is inherently supposed to be in wrestling, because of the booking aspect, because of all of those things, we can kind of drop all of that and just look at it from kind of a cool lens, a cool perspective. And again, having a situation that's never happened before and in wrestling, these are typically very celebrated. So it's one of those things. You're, you're going to be on one side or the other or you're just going to kind of understand that wrestling is a, a gigantic gray area even when a situation in 2020 probably shouldn't be a gray area anymore, at least in the perspective lens of entertainment. So those are my thoughts on it. Feel free to agree or disagree down in the comments section below. Should be interesting. Should be interesting what you guys think on that. Uh, I decided not to edit this video. I decided to just go, well, I never edit anyway, but I decided just to go and give you my unfiltered and raw thoughts on it and see what you guys think. So thanks for indulging me for a few moments and hopefully I didn't ramble and step over myself too much. Thank you very much. Make sure you check me out on Twitch each and every single day. Uh, Dead on Dave on Twitch. Dead on Dave everywhere. Find me. I'm taking over the world and more things are going to be happening here on YouTube as well. That I promise you. Live shows, raw reviews, they're coming back. I'm just trying, once I get back to uh, Connecticut out of here in Germany, I'm going to be able to get back into the groove a little bit easier. So we'll see you then. Keep it copious, folks. And remember, as always, if you don't have talent, have talented friends. See you later.